Okay, here's how to beat the Corrupted Monk Illusion. There are a few different ways to beat her depending on what items you have. I'm going to show a few of those ways, but I'll also show how to beat her if you don't have any of those items, and that includes how to beat her without having to worry about deflecting her attacks. In this video, my attack power is 5 and I have the passive skills Ascending Carp, Descending Carp and Flowing Water. All skills that help you deal more posture damage and take less. If you don't have these unlocked or your attack power is lower, don't worry. Ultimately, that just means the fight will take you a little longer to win. Alright, let's dive in and get the cheesiest and fastest method of downing her out of the way. For this, we're going to stunlock her to death. At the foot of the stairs, pop a Divine Confetti and a Yashiriku Sugar. Run up to her, lock on, and get in three free hits. Use a Snap Seed, then hit her twice. Use another Snap Seed and hit her twice, and then use a third Snap Seed and back off as she'll try to hit you and jump away. Now run to her and hit her with a Firecracker, then hit her twice. Keep doing this until you're out of Firecrackers. The way to make this work is to use your Prosthetic while you see your second swing is in motion. Don't wait until after that, as she might recover. And if you've timed all that nicely, that's all you'll have to do to beat her. There are a few factors that went into why she went down so fast there, and one of them is Divine Confetti. Here's two side-by-side -side clips showing the difference in damage from three hits using Divine Confetti and without. Clearly you can see you should use Divine Confetti if you have it, because even though it does marginal extra damage, that extra damage does add up over time. Okay, now let's start the fight with Snap Seeds only. Snap Seeds take a chunk of her health with each use. You can comfortably get two hits in between the first and second seed use. Like I said before, after the third Snap Seed, you should retreat because she becomes immune to Snap Seeds and she'll take a swipe at you before jumping back. Again, follow her and stunlock her with Firecrackers until they run out. Just keep your eye open as sometimes she doesn't always play ball with this strategy. The reason why we want to stunlock her health down early on is because the lower her health gets, the easier it is to damage her posture. We can still stunlock her later on using Ash if we want to, but now we can really hurt her by deflecting. She'll start with five big swings. These aren't too hard to deflect to hurt her posture. As soon as she finishes, jump to the right. 95% of the time, that will trigger her to do a bunch of wide arcing swipes that will end with a perilous move that you can Makiri counter. Here you can throw some Ash and get in two free hits before you must immediately back off, blocking as she'll likely counterattack without a pause. Now try to deflect her attacks again. They're nearly all easy to block and just a bit harder to deflect. Her perilous attacks are the hardest to deal with because they all have similar tells, but all but one of them can be jumped. The one that can't be jumped can be Makiri countered. It's a bit tougher to recognize that one though. What I do is I try to spot when her right arm goes backwards and up so that you can kind of see her elbow pointing towards the, the sky. It also usually follows that big high arcing swipe she does. We'll look at more deflecting and countering in a moment. For now, if this strat has gone to plan, the fight should be over pretty quickly because her posture meter should fill up before you can deplete her health, opening her for a death blow. Also, don't forget if we'd used Divine Confetti or an attack boosting sugar, it would have been over even quicker. In fact, let's do that fight again and assume we have no Snap Seeds or Divine Confetti, but let's assume we do have Aiko Sugar and some Ash. So in this case, pop the sugar at the foot of the stairs, then go in and this time start with the Firecrackers while taking two swipes in between each throw. Once you're out of Firecrackers, start throwing Ash instead, again taking two swipes in between. Do that until you're out of Ash as well. This is the exact same stun locking strat that we just did in only now we're doing it in a different order with different items. Just like we've already seen, this will get her health lowered so that we can then concentrate on building her posture damage up, mostly by deflecting her attacks. I've got a fair bit of ash here and so I'm able to keep this going for a long time. It will really depend on how much ash you've got as to how much you can stunlock her to get her health down, but ultimately use all your ash if you want to to get her health down. Once you do, she'll start again with her big five swing attack. So get ready to deflect that the moment you're out of items. And again, once she finishes these five swings, you can jump to the right to try to trigger her follow-up swipes that eventually lead to that Makiri counterable perilous attack. Remember, all her perilous attacks can be jumped except that one, and you need to try to bring it out. So if you jump to the right after a big five sweeping uh, arc swings, she's likely to uh, follow it up with the combination that leads to that Makiri counter and that way you always know it's coming which makes it a lot easier to pick it to actually Makiri counter it. 
So again, I'm looking for that elbow going up and then I know I can Makiri counter it. If I don't see that and I see the red parallel symbol, I know I'm going to have to jump. You can also dodge the Makiri counterable move, the perilous attack. Uh, let's wait for it and you can dodge it if you dodge it to the right like that if you see it coming and you're in the right position I don't recommend doing that though it's a chance to put some posture damage on her by not dodging it also if you don't time your dodge correctly and you're not in the right position you're probably going to get hit same as if you attempt to jump back so yeah try to perform the Makiri counter wherever you can of course, unless you're familiar with the moves, that's easier said than done. So let's just look at deflecting her for a moment to help you become familiar with those moves. Most of her swings are pretty telegraphed. So even if you miss your deflections, getting basic blocks shouldn't really be too hard. Don't worry if you miss some deflections though and only end up blocking. It's surprisingly easy to run around this arena and never get touched by her, which provides you plenty of scope to back off and recover your posture if you really need to. That leaves the hardest part of the fight being trying to spot when the one single perilous attack that can't be jumped is coming. It's hard as its tell is very similar to the others. We've already seen how you should really look for the elbow kind of going up to the top of the screen and knowing that you can jump every other perilous attack so if you don't see that elbow you're probably going to have to jump but it's really not something to worry about too much either. Uh, if she gets you with it, if she does get you with that one unjumpable perilous attack, just back off and pop a healing gourd to make sure that your own posture doesn't get damaged as quickly and heals faster, and you should be right. And with that said, the rest of this fight is really going to be about making sure you block all of her attacks and attempt to deflect as many of them as possible to put the posture damage on her and getting her health down as early as you can to make sure that uh, that happens, that her posture bar increases as fast as it possibly can, which relies on her health being as low as you can possibly get it. The rest of it is just about practice and getting your eye in on her attacks and getting your eye in on jumping her perilous attacks. Yeah, and I'll let you watch a little bit more of me doing all of that before we go to the next method. Okay, moving on. What do you do if you have no snap seeds, no divine confetti, no sugars, no ash, and you're struggling to get your deflects or can't get past her perilous attacks? Well, now it's time to use a strat that just wears her down. You should have firecrackers, so we can at least start the fight with taking some early health off like we've already seen. The other thing you should also have by this point in the game is the mortal blade combat skill. So we'll use that from here. This strat involves running away and blocking or deflecting nothing. The whole time, you're going to be waiting for her to do her big forward jump attack. What you want to do is you want to lure her by waiting at the right range, uh, and you'll be able to see me doing that repeatedly here to get an eye for the range. When she jumps, what you want to do is you want to sprint forward and circle around to the left. Don't run straight at her, you're kind of running forward to the left. And then as soon as you're around her, you want to immediately activate your combat art from behind. Uh, if you're locked on, immediately activating your combat art will put the damage on her. Once you've hit her, you want to jump or dodge away immediately to avoid her counter attacks. If you time it right, you should never get hit because she's usually stunned momentarily enough for you to get out of her range. And yeah, this method is just about keeping yourself safe. It's about being patient and waiting for those forward jump attacks and pretty much about running away from every other attack that she offers you until those attacks are done and you're at the perfect range to try and bait her into that forward jumping attack. So you can see she's doing her big five swing there. Now she'll follow that up by pointing at you and then running at you to do another attack. As soon as you evade that, there's probably a jumping attack coming. 
No, she's gonna run at me there, probably because of my positioning. There's the jumping attack though. She'll probably do another one after that. Often she'll do three. If not, if she does that pointing attack, then get into a good range and she'll do a jump. There it is. It usually comes like 90% of the time. Sometimes, like a moment ago, it doesn't, but most of the time it does. So long as you're at the right range, she'll do a jumping attack. Whenever she does the point, you know, you, if you get to range, just wait and there's a jumping attack probably coming. There it is. So you run, circle to the left, get in a mortal blade shot and get out. And this is about wearing her down. You pretty much just do this for the whole fight. One other good thing about this though is if the reason you're doing this is because you're struggling with blocking and deflecting her for some reason, then this is the perfect strategy to actually learn how to block and deflect her because once you get comfortable with just running around and not ever getting hit, then you get comfortable with also standing in front of her and attempting to deflect and block her attacks. Because once you if you do stuff up your deflects and blocks, then you can just revert to running around and never getting hit again. So the only uh, thing you have to worry about with this one is making sure you always run around her, run to the forward and to the left around her the moment you see her jumping, and making sure that you don't run straight at her. If you run straight at her, the likelihood is you're probably going to get hit. And once again, I'm doing this strat right now without any items. So if you actually have any items like Aiko Sugar for extra attack power or whatever, then you'll find that this will go a lot faster. And finally, I say use the Mortal Blade for this because it's pretty good for damage and it's also pretty good for keeping you safe. But you can actually use any attack method you want really, even Floating Passage. So long as you run around and get behind her and don't stay behind her for too long. In fact, that's it for how to beat the Corrupted Monk illusion, so what I might do now is close this video out by showing a deflection free fight, but using Floating Passage instead, since it's one of the weaker combat arts, so if you can do it with that, you can do it with anything. I'll use a couple of other items to help make it go a little faster though. Okay, enjoy.